So thank you so, so much for, for being here. We appreciate um, each and every one of you. Uh, so I, I have the, the honor and esteem and pleasure to be the MC for our Summer 16 launch today. So my name is James Doyle. I'm the coordinator of the Out of School Time Office for Pittsburgh Public Schools. And what we do um, in the Out of School Time Office is we lead a lot of really exciting stuff. So um, one of the things that we manage on behalf of the district is that we have over 90 partnerships um, from the community that lead after and out of school time programming for all of our students. Another program that we have is that we um, deliberately run and manage district run school year after school programs for all of our students to participate in wonderful high quality opportunities. And then another program that's very, very near and dear to a lot of the people in this room is our district summer camp, the Summer Dreamers Academy. And I, I have to call out. I have to call out today that the people in the back of the room, these are our leadership team members for the Summer Dreamers Academy who are participating in training on their days off. So it's their spring break and they came to participate in training for a summer program. So let's give them another round of applause for being here. So when we talk about Summer 16 and, and talk about all of these opportunities um, as a school district, we do um, everything that we can to put in place practices, programs, and people, many of whom are in the back of this room, to prepare our students to be the best possible adults that they can be. So that's what our goals are as a school district, but we recognize that sometimes we have a little bit of challenge within that ideal model. And that challenge comes from the fact that a lot of our students, we have 2.5 months that are off, and those 2.5 months aren't always filled with wonderful, engaging, and experiential learning opportunities. So to really show that, um, and what I'm getting at here is this idea and concept of summer learning loss, I, I'd like to invite two um, volunteers. So I, I prepared this in advance, but if um, Miss Christine and Miss Kristen, if you can come up to the front here. So Ms. Christine, raise your hand. I want you to represent an average or typical student from a middle or higher income family. And Ms. Kristen, I want you to represent an, an average student from a lower income family. And we're gonna present the trajectory of each one of these students through their educational experience. So starting out, let's say starting with us in kindergarten, Christine, if I can ask you to take three steps forward. So this is before Christine and Kristen even start with us. And these steps forward represent Christine's family was able to provide some pretty high quality pre-K experiences. She read a lot. She spent a lot of time in this library um, reading um, and just really, really preparing. And, and her family read to her. And there were a lot of things that happened before Christine started. Unfortunately, Kristen did not have these same opportunities. So she's starting back here. So now as we progress, and let's, let's take it through the school year. So in kindergarten, if I can have you both take three steps forward. So this is a picture of they're progressing pretty much at the same rate academically throughout that school year. And now let's take a look at summer. So Christine, if I can have you take a half step forward. And Kristen, if I can have you take a step back. So Christine, over the summer, she was able to, again, participate in a summer camp. She was able to read. So she spent a lot of time in the library. And she also was able to take a really wonderful and awesome European vacation with her family. So she was able to, to just have all of these different types of experiences. And unfortunately, Ms. Kristen did not have that opportunity. So now let's progress through first grade. And again, if I can have you all take three steps forward. progressing at the same rate. And again, now let's go to summer after first grade. And Christine, if I can have you take a small half step forward. And Kristen, if I can have you take a step back. So again, the summer of first grade, Christine was able to participate in another experiential summer learning camp, was able to really develop her um, socio-emotional skills and, and was able to just do a lot of really exciting and engaging and wonderful opportunities. But unfortunately, Kristen's situation did not allow her to have those same wonderful opportunities. 
So we'll stop it here, but what I want us to all look at is that gap. Do you see that gap between Kristen and Christine? That gap is that visual representation of this summer learning gap or this summer learning slide that we see play out in a lot of our students. So when we talk about Summer 16 and when we talk about engaging our students in these wonderful opportunities that you'll hear a lot about today, it's really with the goal of eliminating this gap that we can see right here. So the hope is that by the end of today, the answer to the question, what are you doing this summer for all of our kids, every single one of them will have a really, really wonderful, exciting, and awesome answer to that, okay? So with that, and, and thank you, our volunteers. Thank you so much. So with that, with this work, we recognize that a lot of um, awesome partnerships and a lot of wonderful individuals can really be supportive of this work. So we'd like to invite up um, an esteemed guest, our um, esteemed chief uh, or ex executive of Allegheny County, uh, Mr. Rich Fitzgerald, who will talk a little bit about Summer 16 and why these opportunities are important. Thank you, James. And, um, to see that gap, um, yeah, that's something we definitely want to fill. Um, and I know this is an initiative that the mayor talked about. I think one of his transition teams a couple of years ago came up with, you know, this, this kind of a plan. What are we going to do? How are we going to fill that gap of a couple of months, three months that we have in the summer to make it worthwhile? And I really want to thank all of the partners. And, you know, the one thing we're good at in Pittsburgh and in this region is partnering and all coming together to solve uh, challenges that we have and to see the Carnegie Library, to see the United Way and Bob Nelkin and his team, uh, former city councilman now Allies for Children Patrick Dowd and the work he's been doing uh, along these lines and obviously the city and the county with the mayor's leadership. Um, you know summer 16 should be a pretty positive and productive summer and I just love the, 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 the dream explore do because you know, when do you dream? When young kids, you know, they dream about the things that they can do. And exploring, there's so many things in this region, in the city and even outside in the county, uh, to be able to explore and then to do them. And then to find out what's out there and, and to go ahead and do it. So for our kids this summer to engage 16,000 of our youth, and it doesn't just have to be about a summer job, and that's something obvious also the mayor and I are working on, our Learn and Earn program where we get 2,000 kids uh, mostly at the high school age level uh, to learn, um, to get out there and learn and earn about what opportunities are out there as young adults. But even at the very early ages and all the programs that are out there and what, and what we can do. I also want to thank the Sprout Fund for their, their support, another a great partner in, in all the folks that we work with. You know, and I'll just give a couple of them once you, you know, get outside of the city in our county parks, you know, nature walks and nature photography, moonlight, uh, moonlight hikes, wildflower hikes with our park rangers, biking, skating, uh, skateboarding, cultural activities at our, at our mansion um, with teas and summer, summer concerts and summer movies. We even have stand-up paddle boarding on North Park Lake. Now, you are not going to see the county executive attempt to do that, because I know our friends from the media would love to have that picture, right? Maybe the mayor, right? You want to do that one? The mayor, he's not going to do that one either. Um, but there's a lot of great things that we can do, and, and, to, and to have a summer uh, full of activities and positive activities. And that's what, and I'll speak also as a parent, that's what I wanted when my kids were growing up. Not to just sit around and watch TV with nothing to do, with boredom. Let's get them out there engaged in fun activities that are gonna help develop them into, in, into good productive uh, adults. So I'm very, very excited about uh, this, this summer program that we have that everybody's working together on. Uh, it's a great opportunity for kids, for parents, for everybody in the community to come together and do all these things. So um, with that, do I, am I introducing? Are you introducing? Okay, I'm sorry, I'll turn it back to James. I'm so used to introducing the mayor that I'm pretty good at that by now, but I'll turn it back to James and let, uh, let him do that. He'll do, he'll do a better job. Thank you and congratulations. And thank you, thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Um, 
sidebar, one thing that I uh, that my team will know here is I, I really like to espouse um, our positive culture, but I also am I'm a real fan of alliteration. So I'll call you um, the the Randy and Rambunctious Rich. So thank you, Randy and Rambunctious Rich. Um, and I have the honor of introducing our, our next esteemed guest on, on alliteration. I'm going to have to give you something, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so you will be the, the wonderful and wild William Peduto. So um, introduce you today. Um, and you're welcome to come up and talk Thank about you. Summer 16. Thank you. I, I was going to um, I'm not even sure if I know what pugnacious means. But, uh, you know the old expression, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, that's what we're celebrating today. You know, there was a task force we put together with the city a couple years ago on education, and one of the, the key areas that the people who were a part of that said to our administration what they wanted to see was out of school time. You know, when they're not Dr. Lane's kids, when they're not in the school being educated, they belong to all of us. And we have a responsibility to give them opportunity. And with that opportunity, we can do a lot of great things. So what we're celebrating today sort of is that teamwork taken to the next scale. Uh, when we started, we had a summer program that employed less than 300 youth. Uh, in the first year, we doubled it to 600. Then we reached out to partner with the county and to partner with other organizations. And last summer, we had 2,000. This summer, there's going to be 16,000. 16,000 city kids that are going to have an opportunity. You know, there are a lot of kids in this city that go to space camp. They go on two-week vacations with their family. They take advantage of our museums and go to different programs. And then we have a whole different Pittsburgh where kids basically stay in their house all summer long because it's dangerous where kids get involved in activities they shouldn't because they're not being given opportunity, just the opportunity. And when we talk about these two Pittsburghs, what we're doing today is building a bridge between them and giving all of our children, every child that wants that opportunity, a chance to do something great this summer. And you know why that's happening? Because of all the people in this room. Because instead of having all these different siloed programs, we're pulling it together and getting the resources that we need in order to help our kids. And you know what we'll start to do? Build one Pittsburgh and take away from that one opportunity that the one child gets that the other one doesn't and give all of our children an opportunity to have a chance to succeed. That's what we got to do in so many different things. But by doing this and working together, we've now created a model that we can start to follow and start to do so many other ways to be able to mend and create one Pittsburgh. Let me just go through the roll call of those that have come together, that are a part of this, and that understanding that by rowing together, we have much more of an opportunity to go further. The partners in the Summer 16 effort include Allegheny Partnership for Out of School Time, APOST, initiative of the United Way of Southwestern PA, Allies for Children, a Plus Schools, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, City Parks, Pittsburgh Public Schools, Remake Learning Network, the Three Rivers Workforce Investment Board, Saturday Light Brigade, the Sprout Fund, the Mentoring Partnership of Southwestern Pennsylvania, and the Pittsburgh Federation of Teachers. On behalf of the children of the City of Pittsburgh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, what a, a great segue for really thinking about what it takes to make a, a wonderful opportunity like this come together, um, mentioning a lot of those uh, amazing and diverse partners that we have um, across the city to really make this happen. Um, one really awesome organization that does an amazing job of coordinating and establishing partnerships across organizations is the United Way of uh, Southwestern Pennsylvania. So I have the honor to introduce the bright and bubbly um, Bob Nelkin uh, from the United Way of Southwestern Pennsylvania. So Bob. No one ever called me bubbly before. <laughs> Immature, yes, bubbly, I don't know. 
you know, and I follow the wild and wonderful mayor, William and the mayor, so. Um, you know, I don't know whether you just noticed what happened, but you had the county executive and the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh came together as they do numerous times every day uh, to bring about a great result. And so what this is, and don't think that this always has happened. I worked in government, I know it hasn't. You've got these people coming together for the common good. And so to Rich and to Wild William, <laughs> you know, we are so grateful that you've come together. And then you know in this city, the libraries, this wonderful library that we're in, it, it comes together because the public and private sources work together. And again, it's this history of the city. When we have a challenge, we come together. And now, for the summer of 16, it's a lot of organizations. The mayor read the list, and there are a lot more people. And we're coming together because we also have dreams for our kids. So I walked in here and I was lost. Myla saw me back in the stacks here looking at all the titles of the books. And I'm just thinking, how wonderful it would be to sit with children and read this wonderful quality children's literature. Let them explore their dreams. Let them hear a neat story that might make them think about their life or what they want to do in their life. It's cool stuff. It's very exciting. And to all of those of you, Summer Dreamers Academy, we are very grateful. So again, thank you. Come on, all of you. Because you understand the power of helping children learn how to be <laughs> successful. And we recently had Paul Tuff from the New York Times uh, who's written about What's, what are the characteristics of success? One child succeeds and one child doesn't. What are the human characteristics that children have to have? And you know them. There's grit, there's curiosity, self-control, zest, optimism, gratitude, and a couple of others. And these are the things you don't just need to be in a classroom during the school year. In fact, some of these things you can learn better on your own, you know, with uh, adult supervision in the summer. So we know what will help our kids succeed. And it's our job and the power that we have to come together to give 16,000 children this great opportunity in the summer. So let me just rally you in the end here. 16,000, we gonna do it? Yes. That was a little meek. <laughs> 16,000, we gonna do it? <laughs> Somewhere in this building there's a librarian going. <laughs> Thanks for all you do for our kids. And, um, Last but not least, I, I just have uh, the, the wonderful opportunity to close our meeting today, too. Um, just wanted to give a, a special um, call and thanks to um, our district leadership. So uh, Ms. Cindy Falls, um, our board member for Pittsburgh Public Schools, I know that you're here and present, so we wanted to give it up. Oh, there you are, Ms. Falls. So thank you um, and our other board members and leadership for really allowing and facilitating a lot of this work to happen. And then last but not least, just to um, echo what Mr. Nelkin said, thanks to all of you. Thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks to all of you for inspiring our kids. And remember that last call of action that we have, engaging 16,000 youth. It's a big, big challenge, but I know that we can do it. So whenever you pass a kid in the street, they all should have an answer to what are you doing this summer? Thank you. I guess I don't, we, we always forget something. There's always a couple things we gotta do. So we do have a website. Um, it is pghsummer16.p. 
pittsburghpa.gov. Wait, that doesn't sound like a website to me. Is that a website? Work? That's it? Okay, we got it right. I also want to acknowledge uh, County Councilman Tom Baker, who's also here with us today and represents some of those park areas uh, that we talked about. He may do that stand up thing on the. Oh, never mind. We'll do it. <laughs> Very good. Thank you all.